I am Sisoko Mbeta Z Ati Oum, the ninth, and I was born in the village of Nje Mver in Fontem, and that's in the BLM division. Uh, the BLM division used to be part of Manu and became a, a division uh, in 1972. Um, I come from a very long lineage of uh, Ekwe. Uh, Ekwe came to Fontem, uh, I believe in the, in the 1920s, mm -hmm. when my great-grandfather, Fontem Asongwanyi, uh, returned from exile in the town of Garwa, in the north of Cameroon. After um, he was exiled by the Germans, he fought a, a, a nine-year war against German imperialism. Mm -hmm. And he finally surrendered and was exiled to Garwa. And then when he returned, uh, when the Germans lost uh, Cameroon as a colony in 1916, uh, Fontem was released from prison in Garwa. And he returned to Fontem in, um, uh, that must have been about 1914, I believe, between 1914 and 1915. Uh, and uh, he began to acquire Epoe. And uh, uh, since then, uh, other Sesikos, other people who aspire to be Sesikos, acquired um, bought Ekwe. Um, Ekwe in Fontem, Fontem is the, la the border going east where Ekwe ends. Um, Ekwe originated from the uh, Balundo Yumujok Balundo, uh, area. And of course, migrated west. The western expansion has very well been documented, but the eastern expansion has not been documented. Mm -hmm. And so, Ekwe went eastwards, and then ended in Fontem, and has not gone beyond Fontem. Uh, my father, Beta Z at the eighth, bought Ekwe in the 1970s. Uh, but prior to buying Ekwe, he had uh, um, uh, he had acquired. A, an, uh, uh, a dance from a jagam called Mesem Mbokonde. Uh, Mesem Mbokonde. Right. And, uh, and so we have a very long history of involvement with the uh, jagam culture. Is it still in your place, Mesem Mbokonde? Yes, it is still there. Mbok in effort means please. Them are the spirits of the water. Great, I'm glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was a little boy, I, you know, I used to play some roles in, in that culture. What what happened, as you, you may uh, you may uh, uh, know, it's there's a huge adaptation because from my reading of the culture of the Mbokondem in uh, uh, in the Jagam area, it's it's uh, a society for young women. But then when my father took it, he adapted it and gave a a, a, a local flavor to it. It was not just the young women, but older women, but even more important, men who were dancing, uh, who were uh, uh, part of the uh, the performance. And uh, uh, my father brought some uh, uh, aspects of the Bamiliki culture, brought some color into it, and it, it trans and transformed it. The amazing thing is, when he then uh, an opportunity arose for my father to take it back to to the roots and to sh to have a presentation in which. The the uh, uh, the people where this uh, the Mbogondem, uh, uh came from uh, had an opportunity to see the different adaptations, and it was just amazing for for, for, for them to see how my father had transformed it. Anyway, back to Ekwe. Then, of course, uh, when my father bought Ekwe in the 1970s, I was in secondary school then. 1970s or 20s? 70s. My my great grandfather yeah. uh, bought on my mother's side, bought Ekwe in the 1920s. My father bought Ekwe in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. Okay. In 20s. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, as you know, Ekwe comes in all in different grades. So he mm -hmm. bought Ekwe all the way to the last grade of, the, uh, of Sesiko. Uh, the problem was, when he died in 1951, uh, as Ekwe culture dictates, the uh, Ekwe stone was uprooted 
and uh, has never ever been replanted the rituals to uh, to uh, keep the lodge going okay. have never ever been uh, performed mm. now uh, in since the early days of equi in Fontem, different uh, different people then began to buy equi and so in 1970 what it must have been about 75 my oh, I was in secondary school in Manthe uh, when my father bought equi and I never really had an opportunity to to uh, uh, be part of the experience because of course I was gone I was in school most of the time but then when I came home on vacation from time to time there were celebrations and I was able to pick up the rudiments the problem was I left Cameroon in 1982 and went to study in Paris went back to Cameroon for a few months then left Cameroon and went to study in Canada and I was there for uh, five and a half years went back to Cameroon for about two months then came to the United States and then since then I've not spent three months in Cameroon mm. and of course my father came to visit in uh, uh, 2006 his second visit to the US and then he returned to Cameroon and within one month he, he died you know uh, uh, and then when he died we went home and buried him and in our tradition then of course after his burial we then had to take uh, about a year and a half to prepare for his funeral, for his big memorial, mm -hmm. uh, to which second funeral. Right, uh, we had at least three thousand people who showed up for that event. During that time, uh, the you know the uh, I was then installed as the uh, chief of the village of the village of Njemvro, and of course uh, with that I took command of the Ekwe Lodge. And the embedders the equity launch. Thank you very much. Um, I want to ask you why would your grandfather want or great grandfather want to bring a pig? What did Ekpe bring to your community that he didn't have before? Is it just the prestige or is it the police aspect, the justice or, or what? Well that's a good question. Uh I believe it was much more the prestige it brought. Mm -hmm. Ekwe has not always had the uh, the policing, the judiciary component in mm -hmm. my uh, culture that it has amongst the Kalabari, amongst the Kenyan, and amongst the uh, uh, I mean the people of Imoja and, and the Iroko people. And this is because we have. Prior to Ekwe coming to Fontaine, we already had traditional societies that were responsible yeah. for policing. Okay. And even as I, uh, <laughs> as I sit here, I am the commander of an, uh, uh, two of those very sacred societies that were responsible, that today are responsible for, uh, for, for uh, 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 um, justice. There is a trust society which we imported to Upper Bayang. Trop. Trop. We imported, uh, we exported it to Upper Bayang. It, mm. it, it, in Upper Bayang, it was called the, the Tut. But in Fontem, it is called the Trop. Mm -hmm. I am the commander of a Trop society. Mm -hmm. But also, we have the La Femme Society. The La Femme Society is the most sacred and perhaps the most secretive institution in uh, in the uh, in uh, uh, Bangwa culture because in, inside the La Femme society anyone can be uh, put on trial including the fun can be put on trial and, and uh, traditionally if someone had to be executed in Fontem it is the Le, the person was judged in the La Femme society and then if judgment if it was capital punishment then of course the truck were charged with the responsibility to go and execute that person so and, and I'm saying this just to let you know that when Ekwe came to Fontaine we already had that set up that uh, society which uh, which um, was responsible for uh, uh, for justice and so Ekwe never really played the judiciary yes. aspect mm -hmm. Ekwe was seen as a very prestigious thing uh, one of the reasons being that it's very expensive to acquire equi, and so 
um, in Fontaine, you had uh, people who saved a whole lot of money to acquire Epoe. And since at the time when there was very little wealth going around, people knew that if anyone owned Epoe, then that person must be someone who, who, uh, who really enjoyed prestige mm -hmm. and someone who was quite wealthy. Okay, thank you. What is the language you speak, your mother language? The language is called Nwe. Now, if you look inside uh, 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 textbooks, uh, it would you would it would be called Bangwa, yeah, and it's spelled B-A-N-G-W-A. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just the language, but also the name given by the Germans to the area. Yes. The native people we are called the Nwe people. Nwe. Yes, but you, as you know, in a Bantoid culture, the at the uh, the the preface words with ba, which means the people of. Yes. So Bangwa means the people of Nwe. Yes, it's plural. Ba is plural. Right. Mo is right. singular. Right. And so, but if just so you know, we arrived there at the border, a very critical area, cultural area between the Ekoi culture of the forest, you know, the uh, the uh, Kenyan culture, the Ejagam culture but also the Bamiliki culture yes. of the East. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we have families which come from, my uh, direct ancestry comes from uh, uh, the, the uh, Eastern Plains, of mm -hmm. the, the Central Plains of Cameroon. But I also have ancestry from the uh, 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 Jagam, my, from, from my new area. Mm -hmm. And so these two people came together and, and, and so created a very unique culture that draws from Ikoi, all the way to Efik, but also from the Bamiliki and as well as the Bamenda uh, uh, area. Well done. Please, I want you to tell me a little bit about the details of your Ekwe. What kind of grades can you tell me about the grades you have or some of the names used for your masquerade or whatever? Oh, sure. How, how, how is it? Right, of course, uh, we have uh, Isong, we have Isong, we have Mboko. Um, you know, when I when I do the incantation, of course, I go from Isong to Mboko to Rongwe to mm -hmm. Temengwe to uh, Angbu to Obangu to uh, you know to Nkanda to uh, as you know right up to Mutama, uh, Bikundi, and so you know we pretty much cover all the grades. Okay. How about them? Uh, do you have more than one mask in your place, or how is Yes. But, yes. Uh, something interesting happened during the last over the last decades in, mm -hmm. in, in my area. Because of the expense in acquiring and maintaining all of the different components of uh, of uh, equip, um, it, uh, I think the culture kind of reduced everything to just the the Mbe, just the Mbe. So if you had an Equa celebration you would normally have the Sisekos heading the procession and then you have the Mayangwe performing with uh, the Sisekos. But what I have done, what I have opted to do is to introduce as many of the different societies as possible. Mm -hmm. So I have now mm -hmm. acquired all of the uh, 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 enough materials for the Angbo, the, the mask and the Angbo. I have replaced, my father had a I think uh, about um, eight different masks of the Obangbu society. I've added 11, not 12 masks recently. So, you know, those are different things that I am, I am, uh, I am reintroducing to, to the Ekwe. And then th there are other societies that, are, that have really been dormant in, in our culture. Uh, and uh, you know, when we sat there, I was listening to the professor who was uh, 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 that you interviewed, uh, and what he was he was uh, alluding to uh, uh, to something that is very prevalent in Ekwe now. Certain societies have just been uh, uh, become dormant, and so the people who used to who uh, uh, possess knowledge of those societies die off, and then nobody then remembers. Uh, 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 so what I'm trying to do is exactly what you're doing in theory, which is I'm reading a lot about 
these societies and then to see which components at the very minimum if even if i am not able to uh, to go back and re uh, re um repossess that the, the the knowledge at the very minimum i want to be able to put together the masks so that when we have an echo celebration I, i'm planning a big echo celebration in de this coming december december of 2011 uh, in honor of my grandmother who passed away in Cameroon. in Cameroon, yes. And so, and the reason I'm uh, having, what I've decided to do for that particular celebration is, <clears throat> you know, I want to have three Mayangpes perform. So the uh, procession comes in, and then the different, uh, 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 the different mask of the Anglo society perform. And then after that, Ngunjo, ladies perform then after that you have all of those as many as 15 masks of obongo come in and perform and then after that another society uh, another uh, 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 another echelon of uh, the equa society so what i'm doing is to invest as much as i can to acquire different masks great um please i want to ask you I want to hear your your, your incantation of Ekpe. Can you do that for me? Okay. Okay. Normally I hold my uh, staff. my staff, but hey, it's not here. So, um, but I would I, I start with AJ AJ Jabario Jabario. Wait. AJ AJ Isa. AJ AJ Mboka. Wait. AJ Eje Orongwe. Oui. Eje Eje Ejingwe. Oui. Eje Eje Angbo. Oui. Eje Eje Nkanda. Oui. Eje Eje Obangu. Oui. Eje Eje Bekundi. Oui. Eje Eje Mutama. Oui. E. Oui. Yo. Okay. Beautiful. Uh, another one that you know, from time to time, I would evoke is the uh, Nchokunda. Yeah. What is that? Uh, it's another society that I just I, I came to discover very recently. Mm -hmm. uh, please tell me what you do in your daily life here. Are you what, what kind of profession are you in? I am a school principal. Wow. I run a school here. Wonderful. And. Um, uh, tomorrow is the first day when my teachers are coming back. So when you see me tomorrow, you know I I look quite different because I've been in a suit and tie. And okay. So in, in that aspect of my life, you know that aspect is quite different from uh, the traditional aspect. Yeah. And like uh, so, uh, what I was telling you is that I come from Fontem and Fontem, um, some uh, 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 an anthropologist. Uh, lived in Fontem in 1960. I think he came in 64 and left in 66. Name? Uh, Robert Brain. He was I, from I, the I University of London. Another work. Yeah, yeah B R A I N. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really recommend that you read his books because right. he was the one. He spent plenty of time in my father's palace. So Ekpe is mentioned there. Yes, and so if, when you look at his books, he he has all the pictures of Ekpe that that perform at. You know, at an event hosted my, by my father in 1964. Wonderful. Okay. And one of the master drummers, mm -hmm. uh, we call him Pa Martin Orop, is the uncle of uh, Sesako, uh, Joseph Mu. Mm -hmm. uh, and so those are some of the common things I share with so many people in here. Yeah. Yes. But take time and read uh, Robert yeah. Brain's yeah. books on, uh, um, uh, you know, he has a, a funerary sculpture. Of the Bangwa people, Bangwa funerary sculpture, and I think he also has uh, he also wrote a book called The Bangwas of, of West Cameroon. He also wrote uh, he wrote uh, at least three books just on Bangwa culture. Okay, Jessica, I'm grateful. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you. Okay. I'm really privileged to yeah. to be able to share. I'm, I'm learning, uh, and as you mentioned a, a while ago, you know, it's a it's a journey, you know, and. Um, I believe I am at the beginning of a very long journey, Amen. but I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah. The experience, I've been very, very lucky that um, uh, the, my new Ekwe 
embrace me. USA. Right. Because, I mean, the, yeah, the Money equity USA. USA. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Because as you found out last um, Friday, mm -hmm. um, we have a huge contribution to make to equity. One of the things that had happened within the Manu community is that um, <laughs> they were, uh, you know, the, the drummers were no longer drumming uh, and the singers were no longer singing. And so whenever we had events, what they did was to use <coughs> CDs. Mm. Well, my lodge, I've been very, very lucky that I have people in my lodge within the community here who, who sing and drum. And so the first time we had an opportunity to 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 perform with my new uh, uh, with uh, USA, we had drummers there, yeah, and so it was the real thing. Yeah. And, and so we are looking at, an, at more opportunities to raise equity to a much higher level. Thank you very much. Thank you.